Today I want to learn how to work a series parallel circuit. When working a series parallel circuit, it's important that you understand that in a series circuit, remember that the current remains the same and the voltage divides, while in a parallel circuit, the voltage remains the same while the current divides. It's also helpful to remember Kirchhoff's voltage law, which states that the sum of the voltage drops in a series path will equal up to the source voltage, and to remember Kirchhoff's current law, which states that the currents entering a junction will equal the currents exiting that same junction. Now looking at this circuit I've got drawn here, you'll see that we've got five resistors, and you can see the values, and the way I go about working a series parallel circuit is I'll ask myself a question. I'll say, do I see two or more resistors in series? Now looking at this circuit, you'll see that there are two resistors in series right here. When I ask myself the question, do I see two or more resistors in series, if the answer is yes, then what I do is I'll draw a circle around those two resistors, and then I add them together, and then I'll redraw the circuit. Now you'll see that 680 plus 1000 would equal 1680 ohms. Now once we combine those two circuits is very or those two resistors is really important that you redraw the circuit. So I'll come down here and I'll draw R1 Since we combined R2 and R3 together, I'm going to redraw that as an equivalent resistance of 1680, 1680 ohms. So just a quick review, we start with our original circuit, we ask ourselves a question, do I see two or more resistors in series? In this case, here's two resistors in series, so if the answer is yes, you combine and redraw the circuit, showing that equivalent resistance. Now once we do that, we'll come back to the circuit we just redrew, and we'll ask ourselves that same question, do I see two or more resistors in series? In this particular circuit, there are not two or more resistors in series, so you ask yourself the second question, do I see two or more resistors in parallel? And in this case, here are two resistors in parallel. If you'll remember, resistors in parallel share two common points. This side of the resistor is connected to this resistor, and this side is connected to this side. So yes, these two resistors are sharing two common points. Now if I take 1680 and 1.2K in parallel, you know that we have to use the inverse key on the calculator, which states that we'll go, we'll type in 1680, hit our inverse key, then go plus 1.2K, which is the same as 1200, hit our inverse key, go equals, and then we'll have to use our inverse key one more time, and we should get 700 ohms as the equivalent resistance between these two resistors. Now the key here is to redraw the circuit. R1 and R5 we bring down. This resistance here is representing the two we just combined in parallel, and that has an equivalent resistance of 700 ohms. Now we'll go back and ask ourselves a question again. Do I see two or more resistors in series? Well, as you can see, R1, this equivalent resistance, and R5 are all in series, so the formula for total resistance here is simply R1 plus the 700 plus R5, and you'll see that that adds up to 2,450 ohms, 
and writing that using uh, a metric prefix would be 2.45 K ohms. So let's do a quick review here. To combine or to solve a series parallel circuit, the first thing I'm going to do is ask myself a question. Do I see two or more resistors in series? If the answer is yes, as it is here, you combine those two resistors or more, and then you redraw the circuit. Then you ask yourself the question again, do I see two or more resistors in series? If the answer is no, then you'll ask yourself a second question, do I see two or more resistors in parallel? In this case, I do have two in parallel, so you combine and you redraw the circuit. Then you ask yourself the question again, do I see two or more resistors in series? Yes, I've got three in series. You add them up, and here is my total resistance for the circuit. Now I'm able to find the total current for the circuit. And we know that Ohm's law for total current is the source voltage divided by the total resistance. And that would give me a current in this circuit of 4.08 milliamps. Now if we go back to our original circuit, we'll see that we've got 4.08 milliamps, which is leaving the negative side of my battery. And this uh, particular circuit we're using electron flow. So as the electrons are leaving my battery, 4.08 milliamps worth, does it run into a resistor or a junction first? Since it runs into a resistor, then I know that this is a series resistor. And what I'm going to have to do is take into consideration this particular voltage drop. And we know that Ohm's law for voltage drop is I, which is 4.08 milliamps, times R, which is 1,000 ohms. So the voltage drop across R1, that should equal out to 4.08 volts. Now the 4.08 uh, milliamps, when it runs into this junction, it's going to split. Some current's going to go through R2 and R3. Some current's going to go through R4. Then it'll recombine at this junction, Kirchhoff current law. And then the total current continues into R5. So I know that R5 is a series resistor. You can see how it's in series with the battery. So I've got to calculate this voltage drop. Ohm's law for voltage drop is I times R. So 4.08 milliamps times 750 ohms would give me a voltage drop across R5 of 3.06 volts. Now, Kirchhoff's voltage law states that the sum of the voltage drops in a series circuit will add up to the source voltage. We know that VR1 is 4.08 volts. We just calculated that. And we know that VR5 is 3.06 volts. We just calculated that. So with a 10-volt source and with 4.08 volts dropped across R1 and 3.06 volts dropped across R5, how many volts is left over for the 700 ohms equivalent resistance? And if you subtract 4 and 3 from 10, you'll see that we should have about 2.86 volts left over. Now, the 700 ohms, how did we find it? We found it by combining this resistance and this resistance in parallel. And we know that parallel voltages remain the same. So if 2.86 volts is across this equivalent resistance, and we found this equivalent resistance by combining these two in parallel, then R4 must be dropping 2.86 volts. And this equivalent resistance here must be dropping 2.86 volts. And if we'll come back up to our original circuit, you'll see that R4, R4 right here, we know that it's dropping 2.86 volts. And knowing that, we can go 2.86 divided by this 1.2K and calculate how much current splits and goes through this particular branch. And that would actually be 2.38 milliamps. If you're wondering how I'm doing these calculations so fast, I've, I've already done these calculations on paper and I'm just transposing them to this, uh, to this video. With 4.08 milliamps entering into this junction, Kirchhoff's current law says that the sum of the currents entering a junction here must equal the current leaving this junction.
here. So if 2.38 milliamps splits off this way, how much current splits and goes through these two resistors? Well, that would be 4.08 minus 2.38 would equal 1.7 milliamps. 1.7 milliamps. Now, I know that the combination of R2 and R3 is 1680, and I know that this 1680 ohm resistor is dropping 2.86 volts, so if I go 2.86 divided by 1680, you'll get the 1.7 milliamps. Now, with the 1.7 milliamps, I can multiply it by 680 to find VR2, which should be 1.16 volts, and if I take 1.7 milli times 1,000 ohms, I should get 1.7 volts. And I think that just about does it for finding all of the voltages and all of the currents for this particular series parallel circuit. The only thing that would be left to find would be the power dissipations. And you can use one of three formulas. We could take the voltage times the resistance. We could take the voltage squared divided by the resistance. Or we could take the current and square it and multiply it by the resistance. If I use these, either of these formulas for whichever resistor, I should come up with the same answer. And just in case you want to work them, the power dissipated in R1, I get 16.65 milliwatts. For PR2, I get 1.98 milliwatts. For PR3, I get 2.89 milliwatts. For PR4, I get 6.82 milliwatts. And for PR5, I get 12.48 milliwatts. So using this video, if you'll practice, Working through this until you get the same answers I get, I think you'll find that this is not a very hard problem to work. Thank you.